This is a human tooth, and it's in pretty bad shape, but you can tell that it's one of these big teeth from back here in the back of the mouth. And if I were to take this and put it into a little bit of water, what I have now is a one molar solution. This question, dude. I teach science on the internet. My whole career is providing answers to this exact question. So let's go through a few. Evolution is real. And it's obvious. Masks, when properly worn, significantly reduce the spread of respiratory diseases, which is why doctors and nurses and dentists and hygienists and surgeons and biologists and all sorts of other people wear them all the time and you want them to. Our understanding of the universe does change from time to time, and that's a very, very good thing. Because without that, we would just be believing the same nonsense that we believed thousands and thousands of years ago. Which is why it's always better to be willing to change your mind when presented with good evidence, rather than just digging in your heels and deciding that you're always right. Climate change is the most dire existential threat currently facing humanity, and we need to take care of it while it's still an option to do so. Although race is a completely social construct that, in fact, has no bearing in biological reality, racism is a very real and very persistent problem that permeates our government at all levels and needs to be taken a lot more seriously than it is. Sex, gender, and sexual orientation are three completely different things, not one of which is a binary, but all three of which are far more diverse and vibrant and interesting than the outdated, reductionist, parochial, puritanical, Eurocentric framework that we were all taught in middle school can possibly account for. Vaccines work. And they save lives. Which is why America has a history of vaccine mandates going back into the 1800s. Why I had to get several vaccines in order to attend public school. Why you have to get specific vaccines to qualify for a visa to travel to certain countries. Why several different jobs require specific vaccines in order to keep employees and the people that they're working with safe. Why soldiers have to take dozens of vaccines in order to complete training. And most importantly of all, why you don't have smallpox right now. Scientists know more about science than senators. And last but not least, while of course every scientist is not a good scientist, and everybody gets things wrong sometimes, if you dismiss what the majority of scientists are saying as just pushing an agenda, you don't actually care about science. You just care about feeling like you're right in spite of all the evidence, and that's really dangerous. This is an incredibly common comment. Every single time that I talk about climate change, somebody says this. Climate change is inevitable. The climate has changed for billions of years. It will change for billions of years after we're gone. The climate has always changed. It is always changing. It will always change. And there's nothing you can do about it. And the hang-up here is that this person is correct. There is absolutely natural climate change. I'm not even talking about the kind that's caused by living organisms changing the atmosphere like we've talked about before. Just totally natural, lifeless ways in which climate change occurs on this and pretty much every other planet all the time forever. This person is correct. But the issue is that that's not the kind of climate change we are talking about. We are talking about anthropogenic climate change. Anthro meaning human, genic meaning creating, human-caused climate change. That's what we're talking about, and there is a big difference. You see, the type of climate change that this commenter is talking about is caused by Milankovitch cycles, and those have three major components, and those are eccentricity, obliquity, and precession. Here's what those mean. Eccentricity has to deal with the shape of our orbit. The more eccentric it is, the more oval shape that it is, the less eccentric the more circular that it is. And this fluctuates a little bit because the Earth is kind of caught in between these tidal forces from the Sun and the Jovian planets, namely Jupiter and Saturn, pulling it in different directions. So that stretches out or compresses our orbit a little bit over time. Obliquity refers to the amount that the Earth is tilted on its axis. So right now we're tilted about 23 and a half degrees, but that's only about halfway between the extremes that it could possibly and has in the past reach. So this little wobble here 
also makes a big difference, especially in the way that the seasons work. And then precession refers to the fact that that axial tilt, the angle between the north and the south poles there, that is also slowly rotating. So not only are we spinning this way, but we're also slowly, slowly rotating that way. So what's really important to remember with these Milankovic cycles is that each of those three components take between tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of years to occur. So the full cycle here takes millions and millions of years, and that is not what we are seeing today. We are seeing dramatic temperature shifts caused by changes in atmospheric chemistry occurring over the course of a few decades. That's scary. But the good news is that even though anthropogenic climate change is the single greatest existential threat facing humanity at this moment, climate scientists and environmental scientists and sustainability scientists all agree that it is not too late to take action. We just need sustained, coordinated, global efforts. Everybody has to agree that you can't breathe money and that living is more important than politics. And those things shouldn't be controversial. Try to stand as still as you possibly can. And then think about this. The Earth is rotating at about a thousand miles an hour. But it's not just doing that, it's also orbiting the Sun, traveling at about 67,000 miles an hour. But the Sun is also moving as the whole Milky Way galaxy rotates. Our solar system is traveling at about half a million miles an hour. But the Milky Way galaxy isn't stationary either. The closest galaxy to us is Andromeda, about two and a half million light years away. And the two galaxies are on a collision course right now. And they should meet up in about four billion years, which means our whole galaxy is traveling at about 250,000 miles an hour. So, as still as you can possibly be, you are still flying through space at breakneck speeds. So I'm here in California, right next to Knott's Berry Farm, and there's palm trees freaking everywhere because we're near Los Angeles, so of course there are. And what's really cool to think about is that out of all of the palm trees all over this state, very, very few of them are actually native to California. In fact, only one species is native to California, and that is the California fan palm. All the other ones were brought here as luxury items for beautification and for status symbols by famous rich people who wanted to put palm trees all over their house and their yards and whatnot. And then, in 1932, I believe, the Olympics were held in Los Angeles, and so the city imported tens of thousands of Mexican fan palm trees to line the streets and to make the city look as pretty as possible. And now, all of these palm trees are basically invasive. They're just all freaking over the place. Also, another cool thing to think about is that palm trees are monocots, which means these trees are more closely related to grass and corn than to these bushes right next to them. How awesome is that? When you were a kid, your baby teeth, or what we call your deciduous teeth, fell out. And then your adult teeth, or your permanent teeth, came in. We all know this happens, it's not exactly a secret, but did you ever stop to think about why or how that happens? After all, it's not like your adult teeth just magically appear beneath your gums one day. They would have had to have developed somewhere, right? Well, these teeth grow inside little spaces in your jawbones, and then they erupt whenever they are finally fully developed. So there was a time in your life when you had more or less, two complete sets of teeth. And it looked just like this. Literally every human anatomy class is just a nightmare if you will not love it so much. Boom, and I'm a worm, look at me go. Oh, I'm like a fish thing now, that's pretty cool. Oh, I'm like a tetrapod, some sort of lizard creature, that's awesome. Oh, we're going straight into monkey, that's skipping several steps, and I'm a human now, Woo!